All right, welcome to part two, class five, painting the landscape from beginning to end. This is gonna be our second little demo, uh, this time with a very warm acrylic underpainting. I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna cool this down considerably. Um, and also introducing the idea of uh, depth and perspective with using fog and atmosphere. The last one we did had a strong uh, light coming from the right to the left. And this one is gonna be a little bit more, um, a little more backlit. But it, it's not gonna have a strong light source. This is gonna be much cooler fog as if the sun has not risen above those trees quite yet. It's still gonna be setting down kind of in this area, I imagine. Yeah, I have a really hard time seeing. <laughs> um, well, you do what, if you have to bring up the lights, yeah, you do what you have to do to paint, and we'll just look at it after. That's the big shadow. Or just periodically turn the light off so we can look at it and then keep going with what you need. All right, well, let's see what happens when we cool it down. I'm going to use just that light. It will cast a little bit of a shadow. Um, I apologize. Mark. You know what? Let's paint in the dark. It's a nocturne. <laughs> I'm going to get a little crazy here. I'm going to go ahead and use kind of a, a cool, this is that king's blue. And I'm going to, this is really me probably being stupid, but I'm going to cover the whole surface with this and really knock it back. And then I'm gonna be doing almost like a reveal, like kind of a wiping away. I'm just looking for a big brush I can use to uh, grab a clean, dry one. I was cleaning a bunch of brushes this morning. I just wanna make sure I don't grab a brush that I'm accidentally still wet with water. So I just grabbed a big shot brush. Who's gonna? Dip it in here, grab a bunch, and let's just add a lot of fog all of a sudden. Look at that, bam. It's You know what I'm gonna be doing? Is I'm gonna be painting on here, but looking at my computer monitor. Love it. <laughs> I'm just grabbing a little bit of Payne's Gray, a little bit of Quinoc or Ultramarine Blue, because I want these to get a little darker as it comes forward. So interesting. All right. Let's get some cool into the sky. I'm wondering, I'm going to do kind of a gray green in the sky to play off those peaks. Can't tell what color I'm mixing, but I should be a grayish greenish color because of what I put in there. Put some Payne's gray, a little bit of ultramarine blue, tiny bit of that crappy Utrecht primary yellow, touch of white. Let's see, still quite dark. Add a little more white to that. So this is almost more like scumbling that I'm doing now. Wow, it's still very dark. Almost more like scumbling. Um, not, doing it so much as uh, a 
And this is on canvas too. So it is probably soaking this paint up a lot faster than I'm used to. So um, I'm just making up excuses right now for when it doesn't work out, but still playing, still having fun. All right, grab another big dry brush. Are you still using some of that medium in there? Mm, a little bit. I should probably add some more. I'm just going to put it on this brush. And I'm going to use it where the two meet, where the sky and the trees meet. You guys might be the only people that ever see this. This video, this recording may not make it out. <laughs> we are privileged. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Yet to be determined. All right. So we got some color on there. Look at how different it is. Wow, that is very atmospheric. Kind of like it, actually. That's all right. Just paper towel and removing a lot of that paint to let some more of that pink show through. Is the texture underneath from the acrylic paint or from, um, a, a, did you put a medium on or? So I actually, Michelle, was experimenting with impasto gel and mixing it with those, because those uh, pink, you know, those paints that I was using on my daughters are so cheap and so thin that I, you know, like painting with watercolor on a canvas. So I thought it might be kind of fun to uh, experiment with the impasto gel because I never have. So yeah, it does have some of the impasto gel on it. And I'm, I think I bought, let me see what brand. You guys probably know more about it than I do. This is the Liquitex Acrylic Medium Flexible Molding Paste. This looks like a little jar. And just oh, again. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Modeling paste or molding paste? Hmm. Modeling paste. Okay. Flexible modeling paste. If you're uh, really nice to Golden and Liquitex, they'll send you samples of some of those things to play with. All right. Yeah, now that I like acrylics, finally. Well, it's cleaning up pretty, pretty nice. Yes. I love the reveal of the pink under all of this fog. Yummy. For what the painting looked like in the beginning. I forgot to take a photo of this one. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. The ridges of that modeling paste, the paint's coming off easier there, which is kind of cool. So if I know that and plan it, I could probably kind of use that knowledge. Michael, yeah. at the very back of where you were just wiping out, which way does that creek turn, left or right? And it goes, I think to the left. Okay, just I just wondered because I'm I'm waiting for something to happen to make that evident. <laughs> yeah, no, good point. Now I can see it. There you go. Michael, was the modeling paste gray in the in the bottle or white's white, clear. It's clear white, okay. It just kind of like gives the paint more body and, yeah. uh, you know, a little denser. 
I have a modeling paste that's a, a, like an acrylic. Uh, it's it's an acrylic, but it has like some kind of porcelain ground in it. Um, and it's fun to do textures with. Okay. McGurl has, Joseph McGurl uses that occasionally uh, on rocks. Right. And, you know, um, I was, I have an art group that I meet up with every Sunday morning and we just talk about business and life and that, that, that. Um, it's kind of an accountability group that I meet with from artists all over the all over the place. One's in Brazil, one's in well, I know he lives in Canada, one's in Hawaii. Uh, I don't know where the other guy lives. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, one of the other painters uh, was experimenting with it on tree bark, and I really that would be interesting. But he's using it under oils but i was like oh i could maybe speed this process up um and sandy you know the artist um robert uh he's a, a wildlife painter robert um oh man i can't remember his name but he paints really exquisite wildlife paintings with a lot of texture um so we were looking at his work and trying to figure out what he's doing so it's kind of a fun thing to do, just to kind of go, I like this work, and then try to figure out how do they do it. Robert Bissell, maybe? Does that sound familiar, Sandy, as far as wildlife artists? Can't or... help. What's that? I, I can't help. I don't. I can't picture. Okay. I have his book in the other room. I'll go. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I you like... Know. I like doing some wild wildlife, but mostly horses and stuff like that. So, right, I, I just meant because he does animals, but yeah. So I grabbed a Q-tip, put a little bit of paint thinner on it to really see if I can reveal some of that. There, Rob <clears throat> Robert Bateman. Bateman, thank you, Robert Bateman. Yeah, beautiful paintings. So, you Michael, know? if if you because that Liquitex flexible modeling paste is for acrylic. So let's say that you did the acrylic, you would do the order of acrylic underpainting, then you would add the texture because you would know where the tree bark or the rocks were, right? And then you oil paint on top of that? I don't know. You're looking at my first one I've ever done. But yeah, maybe. I mean, that's, you know, that'd be like my next experiment. And that's, again, just, you know, why you kind of try to, when you're painting and you're playing and you're, trying new things you kind of try to keep track a little bit of like your order like on the backs of a lot of my panels I have a blue piece of tape and I literally like write like two coats of gesso one coat of this you know and so that if it works or more importantly if it doesn't work like the paint just doesn't take or whatever else then I can backtrack and figure out where did I go wrong because it's tough for me because I'm painting on so many paintings that all at a time right like I was working on multiple commissions and then I you know when I get a little bit antsy I'll pull up some of these little panels and think of an experiment that I could do um but it's hard to keep track especially if I set them aside for any amount of time what a difference sure is kind of cool. cool I kind of like it what do you guys I think like I like it. I like the green sky that, I mean, it doesn't look green, but you know, just that hue next to the pinkish, it's really pretty. It makes the pink pop. Yeah, that was the goal is to, you know, but you saw that I also grayed it down a lot because I didn't want it to compete, but I want it to be enough that it um, plays against. So, you know, you don't need bright green to make pinks and oranges feel really bright and in fact the gray makes the vibrancy of the other colors play if i made a bright green sky it would just be competing for dominance for mm -hmm. more showy michael is that sun going to catch the top of the tree right there on the right um right here yeah. I'm thinking it's almost still down below a little bit. Okay. But 
I could. You want me to bring some light on this tree here? I was just curious what, if you were intending to do that. It would be something I'd be interested in looking anyway. Yeah. Let's see if I can get away with adding a little, just a hint of some sun. You can always wipe it back off. Oops, <laughs> I can't see the color I just put on and it's blue. I thought it was somehow bright yellow. All right, must have, or this brush maybe is dirty. It's like, so wiping that back off immediately. In fact, you're a little paint thinner because having a streak of blue right there where I want the sun is gonna be counterproductive. All right, let's clean this brush. Wonder how I got blue, maybe it just touched something. Use a little, yeah, that kind of looks nice though on the screen. What do you guys think of that little band of light? Yeah, that is that was beautiful. Soften it up a little. Well, this is completely not what I thought I was going to do with this painting when I was planning today's order of events, but you know, just scrubbing in all that bluey gray over the whole thing. But you can really see how having a dry, it could have been an oil painting underneath as well, but having this really dry surface that I can really get in there and scrub away at. I mean, I could come back in and add detail. I, you know, maybe we want some like cool blue flowers or something. I don't know. Let's see. It might get a little silly. Are those even showing up? I can't see them at all in my life. I can. Not not very much. They're not bright. No, I definitely don't want them bright. I'm just kind of thinking a little bit of... They're okay. subtle. Very subtle. So this is at the point at the painting where you say the detail comes later, right? Now you're starting in on some detail. Sure. Yeah. Because I kind of like the fact that it's very subtle. I'm going to use some of that green. It's a little blackened from our last painting. And just see what happens if I just hint at some of the grasses in shadow here. Again, painting by looking at the monitor, not at my painting. It's uh, such a weird and funny thing, but... You know. And that helps keep the eye from escaping on that side. I'm very nervous for what these funny little grasses are doing when I turn the light on, but hopefully it's just kind of hinting into where the shadows are, maybe that this thing's come a little closer. I'll probably just have to wipe this back up down, but you know, maybe it's worth experimenting, trying. 
How are you liking painting over the texture then? Oh, it's great. Yeah, I mean, I can't see the texture as well as you guys, as I can see it on the monitor, because it might be better if I was kind of following, because I did kind of hint at some grasses and stuff with my brushes. And I'm not seeing that right now. So it might be nice, you know, if I was actually following previous guides. Really emerging. Right, yeah, super, super soft. That's a great word. Emerging, that's the name of the painting. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Wonderful, Michelle. You're good at this. <laughs> the only rule is if you name it, you buy it. So. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had that happen once to a sculpture. I, I named it while he was making it, and then I did have to buy one. <laughs> That's funny. My uh, clients that I just sent those Italy paintings to were so thrilled that they got to help name the paintings. It was a lot of fun. I just gave them like 20 ideas, and then they kind of reconfigured the words and you know changed it to be a little bit about what they wanted that was neat you really can't you really can't tell the pink is a fluorescent pink it just looks like quinacridone red and indian yellow right i mean it is such a cheap color but yeah so it's not very strong but it's beautiful Oh, I love it. Oh, good. Very cool. Yeah, we just need some, like a, a heron or, you know, a fisherman sitting back here in the fog or a hunter or something. I don't know, but kind of cool. Well, that was a fun experiment. We all learned together on that one. I love it when a painting takes on a life of its own. Right. It's when, not exactly what you started with, but it usually gets better. Yeah, I like the usually part in that. I wish that were true for me, but, I, you know, it's always worth the experiment because, you know, this was just me playing with a uh, new medium and my daughter's fluorescent paints and uh, holy cow, you know, it may have opened up a whole new uh, something. So that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah. Move the camera over. I kind of like the blue flowers. I do too. I did too, yeah. Key it in and then I wiped away just enough of the top. Oh, sorry, hit the stop. Uh, tops of the grasses. So I'm revealing some of the warmth in the grasses. This one gets a little dark too high. Does and that in the monitor look like it does to your eye? Uh, it's dark in front of me. I can't hardly see it. And it's also, I think, because that light beside me is so bright that it makes it hard for me to, to see it. What if you try turning on the, the other light for a moment, just, Ooh. Uh, but then will the camera adjust down? Evidently not. Is it still in manual? It might be, I'll have to check all that. Nope, I don't like it in real life. <laughs> it's all right, I like it enough and then, I like it here. That looks so much nicer. Can you turn the lights out like you when you turned it off? What does it look like for us? I almost want you guys just to think it looks like this. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, well, I, I like that darker part too, because it oh, that's that is I I just love that. I love the depth on the top of the right tree in the back. That just that makes it just, I don't know, it's just wonderful. It's almost like a cool hug. A little bit, yeah. Let's just kind of dip some of this down. But it's uh, these. This is much greener than I thought it was. I thought it was going to be more on the black side. Well, it looks dark now. Um, so I'll just kind of knock those down a little bit. But yeah, it's super fun. All right, gang. We are going to take a little break. I'm going to go ahead and restart my darn camera. 
or my computer. So I'm going to actually get off and see if I can make some changes. And um, we will come back and where are we at time wise? 11 o'clock. So we're already halfway done with class. Um, I'm wondering if we should just jump to the um, the not do a, a glazing with um, acrylics unless anybody here really wants to see glazing with acrylics. Nope. Okay, great. Yeah. So I'm going to jump when we come back. I will go to uh, starting the uh, creek in the forest. We need to think of a name for it so I don't have to keep explaining it, but creek in the forest. So that'll be part three. And then part four, we'll be going and looking at your guys' work. And so class may be a little bit long. I don't have a dentist appointment or anything like that today. So um, are, would you guys rather do um, review your work first or um, keep painting? No, paint first. I oh. would rather see you paint first. All right. Anybody disagree? Now, as long as we talk a little bit about well, oh. how we're starting. Perfect. I, I, I want to. I'm very happy with what you guys are doing. Great.